Hey guys, we're at the Olympic Oval near Vancouver, Canada. This is actually Richmond on this side, downtown just across, and the beautiful mountains in the background, still got some snow up there. Uh, it's just a wonderful day for a bike ride, and we're looking at a new company called Rise, uh, a bike from them called The Blade. This is sort of a spin-off, and so members of other companies have started this dating back to like 2016, so 2020 is their first model year, but um, to me, it's, I guess that's worth mentioning because these guys have some experience in the industry and to, it really shows. I mean, there's a lot of attention to detail on this bike. So I'm just gonna jump right in. It weighs 68.5 pounds with this really unique rear rack and foot pegs. Okay, so you're not supposed to sit on the rack, although it does have a 25 kilogram, 55 pound max weight rating. So you can really load that up. And I've got the dimensions back at the website, but there's these little bars that probably be used with bungee cables or whatever. You could load it up. Maybe you could have like panniers hanging off, but they would flop around. So I think ideally you'd, you just have like a bundle of goods or maybe even one of those little like egg crate basket kind of things, plastic, like college style. Uh, I like that they've got a little platform piece here and that they include an extender cable for the rear light. So when you buy this bike, you do have to kind of like bolt the, the rack on, put the pedals on, put the front wheel on, and then, you know, the handlebars up here. But otherwise, it's like a lot of direct-to-consumer bikes where it's mostly assembled. There's just a little bit of extra tweaking at the last minute. One thing that uh, I really like though is that they have this steel derailleur guard down here. So that protects the motor power cable, the Acera derailleur, uh, the, sh the shifter cable. It's it's all right there and, and bike that's being shipped to you, it could get jostled around a little bit. So that's a really nice feature. And then on this side, check it out. They're using a steel torque arm. So it's just one of the smaller ones, but that locks into the keyed axle. So normal axle is just round. These ones that has like couple of flat edges and that bites into the aluminum alloy frame and then that steel torque arm adds just even more strength so really well done excellent kickstand placement adjustable length right there you're not going to get pedal lock if you back the bike backwards um, or when you're pedaling along you're not going to get like heel strikes as easily so i appreciate that just well done here's the other kickstand and um, I guess, what am I saying? These are the, the foot pegs. They appear to be aluminum alloy, but then have like a plastic cap, which might be nice in case this scrapes against a wall or something. This isn't gonna do as much damage, but the aluminum alloy is still gonna be sturdy. And they've got this little, just extra welding right here so that it's not gonna spin once it's mounted. It feels like it's, it's pretty strong. And then they've got these little accents as like aluminum plates that just make the bike look cooler, I guess. Maybe you could put, you could like hide something in this little, cubby area under the seat really long banana saddle right here bottle cage bosses below that for a horizontal bottle okay so you're gonna maybe get a little bit of leaking right onto the battery but these are fairly water resistant as is the display and and the controller which is right there in that open area so it's pretty well hidden you've got quick disconnects and everything they've got to put that somewhere um and it's a pretty powerful controller i mean it, it's it's connecting to the motor back there, you can see it's Bafang, fat bike specific, 750 watts for the US, 500 watts for Canada. We are in Canada right now, so just kind of complying with the, the legal limits, 32 kilometer per hour, top speed. It's got throttle. You can disconnect the throttle. So a lot of these bikes, I've been kind of categorizing them as class one, two, and three, because in the US, and I guess in Canada off-road, you can unlock this, you could go a little bit faster. It's just the motor spec down for those for those legal reasons. 80 newton meters of torque, and it is very powerful, especially I think because the wheel size here is 20 inches. So these are the Kenda Crusades. They've got the K-Shield puncture resistant uh, liner. They've got the reflective sidewalls, which pairs up nicely with these lights here. This is like a custom aluminum housing on the headlight, 70 lux pretty nice and it's mounted in such a way it's going to point where you steer but it might bounce up and down a little bit because it's on the arch of the suspension fork you can see it's knurled though so there's these little like teeth so it's not going to get bumped side to side as easily uh, frankly it'd be nice if it was somewhere here maybe or up up here on the handlebars it wouldn't be connected to the unsprung portion of the bike but having an aluminum housing like that and a, a fairly focused beam I can't, I can't complain too much I just wanna come back to these wheels because as I was saying, it's a fairly powerful motor to begin with, but with the 20 inch wheels, 
you get a good mechanical advantage so that that hub motor doesn't have to spin this really like wide and heavier large 26 inch wheel for example so 20 inches that's nice but it does have a lower um, I'm sorry a higher attack angle the bigger wheels have a lower attack angle and they smooth over stuff and they can kind of span the gaps and miss out on the divots whereas the smaller wheels fall into it but these are fat tires so 20 by 4 inches they have a pretty wide 5 to 30 psi rating and if you wanted to take this on sand or like loamy muddy terrain we do actually have sand over there for kind of a volleyball pit you can do that but you you really you have to lower it pretty significantly like down to around five psi for it to actually work and then it starts to kind of spread and you don't get as much efficiency for for getting that like great range but it's a lot more comfortable and then the bike doesn't sink so you know that's that's really worth mentioning i've actually done this on kind of a tourism vacation thing in mexico i was doing some reviews years ago and it worked impressively well especially with a throttle Okay, so throttles are really key to kind of getting started and then maintaining your speed when you're in sand because sometimes you're not able to pedal to get that first, you know, go with the, with the motor while you're balancing a fairly heavy bike. Again, 68.5 pounds. Uh, the battery is another, uh, another thing worth mentioning here that's done well. It's like placed low and center on the bike, kind of lower with the motor back there. And then we've got the rack. I weighed the bike from right about here and it was pretty stable. So it's like fairly good weight distribution. And part of the reason you'd think like a lot of weight is back here, but we've got this like steel suspension fork up front with like 60 millimeters of travel. I think this is Mozo. It doesn't have any branding, but it does have this compression lockout adjust right here and then preload adjust. So you can preload the springs for your body weight or whatever your setup is. I feel like it's gonna be a rear heavy bike, especially with the second passenger. And they say the max weight rating on this is like, 300 pounds so keep that in mind i mean it, you could you could probably pretty easily overload this if you actually have two passengers um but the point being weight is low weight is centered the motor is powerful lots of options with those fat tires even though they have a higher attack angle it can be pretty comfortable because of the psi range and because of the suspension fork it's it's not the world's nicest fork but it's nice that they have that because there's no seat post here there's no way to like use a suspension seat post with this. This is all you got. And there's only one frame size. Okay, so, you know, this is gonna be like a really short pedal reach versus if you slide back here, now you're getting a longer pedal reach if you have long legs, but you're kind of like leaning way forward to reach the bars. You can swivel the bars a little bit. This is not an issue that's unique to the Rise Blade. Any of these little like scrambler e-bikes, like the Super 73s, or we did some from Ad Motor, they're all, they all have this issue, except for maybe like Rad Power Bikes, they have the Rad Runner, and it has a unique kind of like a little saddle that actually slides up and down. So you can get a better pedal, like make it a bit more comfortable and better, um, full full pedal strokes, right? Whereas this doesn't have that adjustability. Now that seat isn't, quite as comfortable as this in terms of padding but it's a little bit narrower one of the things i've noticed when i've been riding this and other like banana seat bikes is that you're pedaling and my legs sort of flare out a little bit and i'm not you know so you can kind of chafe your inner thigh if you're actually pedaling a whole bunch so for me this is more of like a zoomer fun like beach get around the city kind of an, an e-bike versus an active like pedaling perfectly ergonomic setup so just you know kind of keep that in mind think about your use case and then think about the color you like i love that they've got this matte black glossy red and then gloss yellow as well they all look really really nice and you know considering they don't have any frame size choices it's nice that at least you can get the colors right and with the black a lot of times i'm like look you're already lower to the ground because of the smaller wheels um and then having a black frame, you might not be as visible, but they've got these nice logos and stuff, and then those reflective tires really help. Yes, they have lights, but this one doesn't have a whole lot of vis visibility from the side. There aren't like little cutouts or something, and even just the way that the lens is on the front, you just can't see it from the side. The rear one's a lot better. This is what it looks like if you don't have the rack installed. So you certainly don't have to install the rack, and I think the bike looks a little bit sportier this way. Probably weighs a little bit less. Um, so that's that's worth noting. And both of these bikes happen to have their upgraded battery option. It's only $200 more for this like 19.2 amp hour 
the standard battery is 16 amp hour. They're both 48 volts, which is great. So that's part of what makes this thing just like go. And it really feels zippy, which is very satisfying. About 1.3 pounds of additional weight if you do the upgraded battery pack, which to me, the $200, 1.3 pounds, that's not a big, that's not a bad deal. And you're really gonna, you know, especially for someone who's using the throttle a lot or has a second passenger or something, that's a, that's a really nice upgrade. And they even have this little, you know, USB charging port on the side. So this is USB type A, full size, fairly good positioning close to the handlebars if you wanted to run that up and add an additional light maybe or a little GPS mount. They've got their own phone mount down here. You can see it's just kind of put it on the kind of on the top tube and it's, I don't know, to me that's like, okay, it's an option. You pay a little extra. They've got this cool horn and, it, and the horn has like a USB port thing built into it as well, micro USB. So maybe that's a way to get um, just to get a little bit of extra power up at the front. It has a whole bunch of chimes and stuff. It's kind of kind of fun. I might show that a little bit later. They also have this side mirror and then they have some bag options, some like panniers and trunk bags and stuff like that. So coming back to like just all the, the little things, nice bell. I see these flick bells a lot, but this one just feels sturdier and it sounds nicer than a lot of the ones that, that I see. This bottle cage it's a little bit flimsy at first and you're like, why is that? And it's because it's adjustable. So you can expand this to fit larger bottles. And I think that's kind of a nice feature. You can always get an, just a, a solid aluminum uh, bottle cage aftermarket pretty cheap, but this was the thoughtful addition that comes with the bike, just like the rear rack. And then look at this, we've got more bottle cage bosses. Now you could put a bottle down here, but it's a pretty big reach. And I think it's more, it's probably, better suited to like a folding lock, which of course they sell as well. And it's not gonna be key to like to the battery. And I, I should mention, um, you know, with the battery pack that they've got set up here, I was kind of was trying to find the, there it is, okay. I thought so. So it's on the, it's on the non-drive side of the bike where the kickstand is. And this is where the bike's gonna tip if it does tip. So it's not ideal and it's really low. So it's like whenever you're gonna charge this, if you don't take the battery off, you have to reach way down and plug it in. And then it's very close to that crank arm. So it could get kind of sheared off or bent or busted. Thankfully, they do offer a year long comprehensive warranty on this bike. And again, it, these people have been working in the industry for a while. So it feels like pretty solid. This is the charger, very similar to the, the kind of basic cheap chargers I see from other value e-bikes but it's actually a three amp instead of two amps. So it's like 1.6 pounds, gonna charge a little faster, which is awesome considering the higher capacity battery option. That's great. Even the stock battery, 48 volts, 16 amp hours is, that's above average right there. So anyway, they throw in this little multi-tool to help you get it, get it assembled, which is nice. Nice branded slap guard. Don't let it get too close to the tires or you'll hear it like zipping while you pedal. Nice Welgo aluminum alloy platform pedals. These are some of my favorites. They get the job done. A little bit more surface area for bigger feet. If you're riding along, you don't want to slip off and they just look nice. That's the, the one thing about the black frame is that everything ties in so well. And you can see the black spokes and the black hubs and the black cable wrap. There are a lot of cables up here because they have motor inhibitors on both brakes, which is really important for a bike that uses a cadence sensor for a bike with such a powerful hub motor. But again, just blacked out. Even the support arms for these plastic fenders, 110 millimeter plastic fenders, they're gonna do a pretty good job. And the front one, it goes pretty low. So it just, it does feel really good. And then this is the cadence sensor, 12 magnet internal. So this is like a sealed cadence sensor versus the big external disc. Looks really nice. They even have cable wrapping down here. It's just really well done and the black cables they become almost invisible on the black frame bike and partially because a lot of them are internally internally routed. I'll try to give you a shot of the bottom bracket where they, they come out again and then run along the rear uh, portion of the bike. So really good job. And of course, with power, with potentially higher speeds and uh, with the throttle, you need good brakes. And I feel like they've done a good job here. So these are Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, three finger levers, both have those motor inhibitors, 180 millimeter rotors. That's great. Like that's exactly what you'd want to see. And, and you get the added advantage of the smaller wheel size. It's the same thing. Like the motor gets a mechanical advantage, the brakes get a mechanical advantage. So I'm, I'm stoked on this bike. Like, is this, 
<laughs> oh, look at this, there's a hat kind of in there. So they're using it like a little little cubby already, um, which is fun. So is, I think the bigger question I'd be asking myself is like, do I need this kind of bike? Do I really want a scrambler? It's, you know, you can't get that suspension seat post and they've already done everything they could to, to make it comfortable. So if you want the second passenger, if you want something affordable, this is $16.99 USD, $19.99 Canadian, which to me is a pretty good deal. That's with the smaller 16 amp hour battery, which is again, pretty awesome. It's just, do you need this kind of bike? If you do, this is one of my top picks for 2020. I just, cause I feel like it's got everything and it's pretty well done. Oh, 52 tooth chain ring with an alloy guide. So this is both gonna protect your pant legs from touching it, almost like a, a chain cover would. And it's gonna protect if you have like a curb or a log strike. And it's gonna keep the chain from bouncing off if you're on rough terrain, which, which is gonna happen a little bit more easily because of the smaller wheel diameter. And then back here, this is a seven speed. Not only did they use three steps up Shimano Acera derailleur, but they've got seven speed DNP nickel coated freewheel 11 to 32. So really nice big, um, so like low gear for climbing and starting, which is great. And then a fairly high, um, high gear, 11 tooth. Like that's, I've, I've actually pedaled with this quite a bit, rode like 10 minutes to get here today, just all around. And it was, um, it was satisfying. I mean, I, I was going, I was like, you know, at the 32 kilometer per hour Canadian maximum. And I was pedaling so slowly because of that 11 tooth. Okay, so that means the people in the US or people who take this off road, you're really gonna be in good shape. You're not gonna be like struggling to keep up, like beating eggs is what I call it. Um, and I also pedaled this unassisted and it worked pretty well too. So what I'm trying to say is I feel like they've, they've got you covered, they do a good job. Maybe as a final comment, the bike isn't perfectly symmetrical. If you get the upgraded battery, like it's flat on this side and then it bulges out a little bit on the left just because they gotta, they gotta fit more cells in. Apparently they use LG, high quality cells, 3,400 milliamp um, for those cells. So, okay, let's get into it. Uh, I'm gonna power on the display and these are set up with a password by, uh, if you want to. So this one, this one isn't, I think the other one, they, they unlocked it for me so it'd be easier on the demo, but I wanna show you what that looks like. So I power it up and see it says PSD, like password. So one, nine, one, nine is that password. And there we go, we're into the display. But I'm gonna come back over to this one because I think the, the lighting's a little bit better for you. So we got speed, that's the current speed, it's in kilometers per hour because we're in Canada. And then charge level on the battery, five bars and battery percentage, very nice. Just much more precise to have that than guessing 20% increments. And then pedal assist level, it starts in one, which means the throttle is hot. If you take it down to zero, the throttle won't work, which is nice. So you could just use this like a bike, turn on the lights, maybe use the horn, something like that. That's one chime. There's another chime. I, it's so annoying, I'm just gonna stop right now. They have several other little jingles built in. And then the pedal assist level goes all the way up to seven by default, but you can set that up to be three, five, seven, or nine. So seven's a good sweet spot, it gives you enough a range of speeds, but you're not having to click nine times. I think I'm I'm comfortable with five, but seven's actually, it's kind of nice and that's how they set it up. Trip distance down here. Now, if we start pressing the power button over here, it goes to average speed at the top and then max speed. And then down here, we go from trip distance to odometer to trip timer. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of good features built in. One of my favorites is the headlights. So notice there's only a couple buttons on this, this button pad. And this is actually one of the more vulnerable button, button pads. It's like plasticky. And if you get that caught on like your sleeve, it can actually rip these up. They're just, they're, they seem kind of delicate to me. So just be careful, just notice that. So anyway, I hold the, the plus button and we get the, the headlight icon. So this is what it looks like. Uh, pretty bright, you know, I, again, I'm, I don't want to complain too much. It's just that there are better options now available. And then there's the two LED rear light. This is really nice Linneo from Spininga. And then they've done something really cool. So if I hold the, the plus button again, I think we, there we go. Look at that. It blinks. 
So they added blinking mode to this, very cool. No, it doesn't have brake light activation with the brake levers, but to have a kind of a flashing mode for the rear light built in that way is just such a treat for me. Okay, and then if you hold the minus button, we get walk mode, which is great. Of course, you could also try to use the, the throttle to get, get some help if you're climbing a steep hill or something. And I think that's pretty much it, except for cruise control. So the other thing is if you, you get this bike going and you're using the throttle like this and you just hold it consistently for like eight seconds or something and then let go, now well, it didn't do it, but it's supposed to give you cruise control. And we tested that earlier. I thought that was kind of neat too. It's just sort of like a hidden feature. So for people who are going a long ways, you, you can let your thumb give yourself a little bit of a rest. Yes, the throttle's on the left-hand side. A lot of people are like, why not the right? And it's because they got these trigger shifters and the bell and everything. So, and plus they'd have to flip it so the, the throttle would be up here. You can see how the housing and stuff is just too crowded. So many electric bikes put it on the left. I like trigger throttles. Some people prefer twist throttles. Um, I guess it's just a preference thing, but that's the way they set it up. And again, it's very easy to remove that. And then with, with like a half grip twister, if you wanted to unplug it, it's still there physically and it could mess up your, compromise your grip a little bit. Um, while we're on the subject of shifters, it's nice that there's a window here. There's only a one way high lever, so it doesn't go back this way. So you, you always have to pull to shift gears. Thankfully, it's like a triple triple shifter on the low gear so you you can dump gears quickly and with a, a hub motor like this that's the best setup for a throttle right you, you, there's no mid drive you don't have to worry about mashing the gears you don't have to worry about shift detection or anything like that if you broke the chain or if you messed up your gears doesn't matter the motor's going to work it's going to be fine and especially with that torque arm and then the derailleur guard that protects the power cable you know just good stuff like this thing is set up for fun and i think it looks great and I think it's probably time for a ride. Okay guys, uh, I'm gonna take it down to zero and start off just pedaling because people ask about that sometimes. Like how difficult is it? I'm in a low gear, so it's actually pretty easy to start out. And you know, this is the thing, my legs are, I'm just not getting that, that full leg extension. And maybe if I scoot back, it gets better, but now I'm kind of reaching. I got this like, chopper ape hanger thing going on um this bike even with the fat tires it's it's a little a little bit tippy it's like not as easy for me to ride no hands and maybe that's just how it is for this type of bike so i'm going to take it up to level three can't even really hear it on the gravel. So now I'm going to take it onto the concrete. Oh boy, now you can hear it. Try the no hands again. You know, yeah, it goes all right. Maybe part of it is I can't steer the bike because it doesn't have the same like nose that a traditional saddle would. There we go. And then the throttle just really takes off. Yeah, it's it's pretty satisfying that way. Let's do it again. There we go, just all the way up to 32, that quickly. Just very impressive. some puddles here, see how that works. A little bit of, little bit of water going on my boots. Not too bad, the fenders actually, fenders actually did okay. I'm always tempted to just like pick my feet up. Hello. Such a beautiful day, gosh. Okay, let's hit those puddles again. So much fun. This is a very steep hill. So I'm gonna see if I can ascend this. Oh, okay. I did have to turn a little bit, but I basically started from zero and uh, made it up that, oh boy. 
got to keep your your hand on the brakes my goodness i just you know again the 12 magnet sensor it's pretty sensitive so i just bumped it and it and the bike took off because i'm in level five that's not even level seven so be careful with these bikes they do weigh a little bit more i feel like i have good balance but i've i crashed just the other day i crashed on that specialized uh i guess the turbo levo sl it happens that's why i always wear my helmet okay guys you're connected to that rear rack and you've got just an excellent viewing position for that seven speed freewheel again 11 to 32 teeth that's pretty great for a freewheel normally you have to have a cassette to to get something like this and there's the derail your guard and the shifter and everything um and this peg this is this is what it looks like out it's it seems like it's closer to the bike even when it's extended than the pedal so that's nice because you don't want to run into someone's shin with this or a wall and again they got that plastic cap at the end so i'm just gonna zoom along your your motor might sound slightly different depending on if you're in canada or the u.s but i think it's physically very similar maybe even the same and they just spec it slightly differently depending on the the geography i frequently ride in assist level three just because it's a bit more efficient you're gonna maximize your range that way and it's it's not quite as like zoomy feeling so that's where i'm going to start and then of course i'll take it all the way up and i'll use the throttle and stuff and i am in the lowest gear so it's a good place to start Very responsive uh, cadence sensor, which I appreciate. And of course you can override with the brake levers. Let's do some throttling. Mm -hmm. We got the Vancouver airport just over yonder, so we might hear some planes in the background. I know it's fun to see third person perspective, so I got a friend here just on a bike. It's gonna show what this looks like, and uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. so this is like with the second person, maybe back here. Be like pretty close. If you had long legs, you, you wouldn't want to hit your knees on that handlebar. For me, it's relaxing to be a further back like this. Now without the camera. Now it's it's fairly stable, but it's just the heavier lower platform. Not quite the same as riding a more traditional like 26 inch bike or whatever. So anyway, now let's do the throttle. Good job braking too. Did you have to, to put the camera down to brake? Maybe a little. <laughs> we were going fast, weren't we? <laughs> Better safe than sorry. So there we go. I'm gonna take some air out of these tires so it's a little bit more comfortable to do some bumps. I was getting off and I just whacked my knee on this rack, and it was really, uh, it was really painful. So <laughs> be, keep that in mind. That's that's one reason why you might want to take the rack off and just set it up. Yeah, sure, sure. Are you okay being on camera? Oh, yeah. You are? There you go. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I hope you have a great day. Where are you going? You on an adventure? Yeah, but I'm going to see what I can make out of it. I like work, working with wood. Sweet, sweet. I that's a, that's a fun hobby. I like your... Is this an electric scooter? Yeah. Sweet. These are electric bikes, so we're, we're having fun. Uh, they look a lot different, man. <laughs> yeah, these ones have like the fat tires and they're kind of off-road and stuff. But I guess this thing is too. You're, you're getting old. No, no, I get, I get planted too easy with this thing. Oh, yeah? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, I hope you have a good day, man. Same with you. See you out here next time. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, is this good? I think, we, I think we got the tires like basically I'm getting some help here. No, let's go a little bit lower because they, they can go really low. Oh, that's such a good, that's such a good way to do it. Just take the, uh, that little tool that they give you and press down on the valve 
Um, I use my fingernails or a rock a lot of times if I don't have one um, tool available. It's padded stitch grips, non-locking, but they do have the removable end cap for that optional like side mirror. That's pretty cool. I think that's good. I think I'm gonna go and just try this thing like going down the stairs a little bit and then just zip back. Yeah, yeah the uh, that suspension fork, it does make a difference. It, I mean, you don't get quite as much travel as like a full-size mountain bike, but um, that worked okay going down the stairs. I'm not getting worked too hard. And I wanna I wanna go like up just these stairs and see if I can make it. coming at the stairs a little slow because you know it's it's a bit jarring but to get even that high and then you just use the throttle like this push the bike the rest of the way up like no problem i i wouldn't be worried about getting stuck on this bike or anything i kind of want to do the sand now will you just follow me like over that way go down again bad and this is soft sand Amazing, and I'm, I'm gonna go from standstill here. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. This is just like the perfect place to come. I did not expect there to be sand and it worked so well. That was amazing. And I don't th I think we could even go lower on the tires, but I'm a pretty lightweight rider at like 135 pounds. So keep that in mind. I had no problem starting on the sand and handling it. I, a lot of times, like when I'm reviewing these smaller wheel diameter, I feel like, oh, you're not gonna get as much. The surface patch is gonna be smaller because they're, they're steeper. Um, and I wonder like, how's it gonna work in sand? But for it to do that in like soft sand was really, um, was really awesome and this this feedback applies to probably any fat bike that has a throttle that you can lower the tire pressure on so just it's just fun to like kind of demo each bikes it's a little fun to try something new i also wanted to just um suggest that whenever you stop the bike uh take it down to zero or turn it off because it's, it's so easy to like bump that throttle like that and like lose control and it's, you know it's a pretty powerful motor so i'm going to turn it off for a second i wanted to show the battery just comes off like this i think the uh 16 amp hour one's like 9.2 pounds and this one's like 10.4 10.5 and then the motor is about 10 and a half pounds as well so kind of neat i you know there's the there's the usb port so if you were camping or something you could take this off the bike and use it for a little backup power bank i think you could also it's probably like a good idea to take this off if you're lifting the bike because it's fairly heavy. It's gonna make it a little bit easier. Like if you have a car rack or something, I always put it close to the car so that the weight doesn't mess up your hitch. And I store these in like a cool dry location because extreme heat over time, it degrades the cells. The extreme cold is not so bad for the cells, but it's gonna sap your range. So you're just not gonna go as far that day until the battery warms up. But it's nice that you could bring this into like an office or something. This could actually be a decent commuter platform because it has the lights and the fenders and the rack. Like, you know, that's that's pretty neat to have so many things included. Just kind of click this back on. Of course, try not to drop these things. There we go, it's that easy. You don't have to leave don't have to leave the key in or anything. I'm gonna do that so I don't forget it. 
Yeah, but I think that's about it, you guys. I've gone like super thorough on this bike. I think it's a, it's a pretty good offering, especially at this price point. For the full written review, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. I do all the measurements and specs and stuff, and there's a really cool comparison tool that you can use just to kind of suss out the details. I welcome your feedback. I know this is like a relatively new brand too, so let me know what you think. They have that year-long comprehensive warranty, and um, I don't know. We'll see you in the next one. I love you. Ride safe.